Hello everybody, Cole Soros Dickinson I here, and today I'm with my good friend Troy Hello. from the YouTube channel Repti Boy Troy. I'll leave a link in the description. Go and check him out. He does some awesome stuff, and we're gonna be doing a lot more uh, collabs in the future because yes. you know, still pretty small channel, and okay. I think that we could definitely get you up a little bit more. Not saying that I'm big. I only have like 300 subscribers. So <laughs> today, as you read, we are going to be redoing. Yeah, she's right there. We're gonna be redoing my Ambulopigid or my giant African tailless whip scorpion into a bioactive tank. If you know me, you know I have a soft spot for bioactive tanks. I think that they're the future of reptile keeping and invertebrate keeping as well. So I got a bunch of stuff from the Bio Dude, which we'll also leave a link in the description. Not sponsored, I spent a lot of money on this, but I just think it's super high quality stuff and it's definitely worth uh, checking out if you're going to do any type of bioactive stuff. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So obviously the first thing we gotta do is actually get the whip scorpion out, and she's in somewhat of a good position. So we are just going to take this piece of cork bark right here, and you see that she's clinging on right there. So this is Damien, my tailless African giant whip scorpion. And we are going to just Delicately, these are very delicate animals. So we're going to very delicately actually pick her up and put her into a little holding container, which is a deli cup. There we go. So we got her out. This is her, this is Damien. Um, named her Damien before I realized that she was a female, which I realized she was a female like about 10 seconds after I named her. So yeah. Let's put her just straight in this little deli cup just for the time being. She's only gonna be in here for a little bit. Funnily enough, this is the actually the um, exact same deli cup that I bought her in. So we are gonna put that to the side for now and now we are actually going to start totally redoing this enclosure. So I believe that this tank is the, uh, it's the vertical creature habitat by Zoomed. It's a super nice, it's a cute little enclosure. Uh, it, it works well for invertebrates. I wouldn't keep anything other than invertebrates in it because it's a really small enclosure. But invertebrates generally like really small enclosures. So yeah, without further ado, let's start actually redoing this. So here we got everything for the enclosure. We've got some nice pieces of cork bark. These two are gonna be in the enclosure. We probably won't have enough space for this, but if we do, then we do. We've got uh, this actual substrate. This is the Terra Arena. Uh, for from the bio dude. We've got bio shot. We've got a bunch of um, biodegradables We've got some actual I think these are possum jaw bones uh, These were actually previously in the enclosure. I collected them myself. They're probably gonna go back in and Then we have this really cute little seed pod. It's called a bell pod I really like it and it, it's a little accent thing We have this grow light and then we have this pretty little tropical plant. I don't know exactly what it is, but it also came from thebiodude.com. And for our cleanup crew, we are going to use dwarf white isopods. These are a tropical species of isopod. And actually all of them are females. And they all reproduce uh, without having to mate, obviously. But yeah, they're parthen parthenogenic. That's the word I was looking for. So yeah, without further ado, let's actually clean out all the crappy substrate from this tank and let's start filling it up with all this amazing bioactive stuff. All right, so we have gotten all of the substrate out of this tank or most of it, it'll be fine. If it mixes with the uh, new substrate, that'll be all right. And there's no way we're using all of this. Uh, this is way too much for this tank, which is great in case I get any more invertebrates, I can use um, this substrate as well. So yeah, let's pop this open and let's do it. So we are going to just go ahead and open this up just like so. <laughs> that was a bit aggressive. And we are going to dump in a healthy amount of substrate even though amblypages don't burrow too much, uh, you should always give them the option to. And with all invertebrates, you should use a lot of substrate. So it looks like there's a lot of sand, coconut fiber, activated carbon. Um, 
I see some twigs, pieces of wood. Charcoal. Charcoal, that's activated carbon. So yeah, um, let's spread that around and see how much. Yeah, we're probably gonna need a little bit more, especially if we wanna do some definition. There we go, that's looking a lot better. You always wanna use a lot of substrate for almost anything, I would say. Especially in bioactive tanks to give the uh, cleanup crew lots of places to hide and dig. And I got some on the outside, but that'll be all right. I can, thankfully we're doing this on a towel. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's a nice healthy layer of substrate. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to open up one of these bags. Uh, which one do you think should be the uh, mix in? That one, I think that one. Okay, then we'll mix this one into the actual substrate. And then we will use the other one to go on top. So to mix this into the substrate, we are just gonna empty all of this into the actual thing. Oh my God, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna empty all of these biodegradables into the substrate. And we are just going to mix it around just like that. Don't be afraid to get dirty. This is all part of the fun of making bioactive tanks. So, there we go. We're getting it nice and mixed in. Break up the leaves a little bit. Break the sphagnum moss up a little bit. You want to give lots of areas to retain humidity and air pockets so that the plant's roots can go in and also our isopods can also go in. Now there's another thing that you really need to add to your bioactive setup once you add lots of biodegradables and that would be your BioShot. So the BioShot basically is a bunch of beneficial bacteria and microbes that will help jumpstart your bioactive build. So we are going to pour just all of this into the enclosure just like that. And then again, we're gonna mix it around once more. And I think we should add a little bit more substrate. Yeah, I think so. Because that looks like. So we're just gonna add another nice, healthy amount of Terra Arena to there. Now that's looking good. That is a nice substrate mixture. Look at that, a great mix of non-organic and organic material. This will pack down really nicely and we can even add some nice, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like topography. Yeah. So yeah, I got some in my eye. <laughs> Bad thing about sphagnum moss, when it's wet, sorry, when it's dry, it kind of goes in the air. Speaking of, we are actually going to get this spray bottle. Real quick, we're just gonna spray down the substrate. Should have filled this up before we started filming. I will fill this up and we'll give it a nice spray down. But yeah, so the most important part of any bioactive build is the actual substrate. So now we're gonna move on to decorating it. I actually uh, sprayed it all down and I started doing some topography, some uh, landscaping, if you will. And so now we are going to add in our cork pieces. So the first one that we're gonna add in is the one that we actually got from the bio dude. We're just gonna dig it down in there and it may be too big. <laughs> so we may need to actually break this a little bit, but that's should be fairly easy. Uh, we'll just hopefully just snap it in half or snap this little piece off. And maybe it'll work a little bit better now. Yeah, there we go. So now it actually fits in the enclosure, just like that. And it'll provide Damien with a nice hiding spot behind this nice piece of cork bark. Because if you didn't know anything about amblypigids, uh, the first thing you'll know is that they like to hide behind flat areas. So there we go. So now we're gonna put the second piece in and we could bury it down like right here maybe to add some like cross areas. Damien can also go in between both of them. Yeah, she can go in between. Um, so yeah, that looks pretty nice. That's a good enclosure. Let's see if it fits with the lid on. I'm just gonna get the lid right here. 
We'll see if it does fit. Perfect, it does. And yeah, this will provide her with a lot of hiding places and a lot of good areas. But we're not done, obviously. You know, we gotta add a little bit more. Actually, we probably should have added the cleanup crew before we put this in. It's fine. But that'll be all right. We're just gonna add a little bit of these dwarf white isopods. You know, we're just gonna kind of scatter them around. I'm just gonna get handfuls of the substrate. We put them in, I'm probably getting some. And since these are parthenogenic, technically to start a culture, you only need one. However, having more will never hurt. Here, that's a couple of them that I'll just put in there. There, you can kind of see them crawling around. But yeah, <clears throat> that's a lot. So next, we are going to put in the plant, which is our little variegated plant right here. So yeah, let's do this. All right, so now we are going to put this beautiful little variegated plant into the enclosure. And Troy actually picked out where it's gonna go. It's gonna go right here in the front, almost as like a little eye catcher. So we're gonna dig all the way down and we are just gonna put the root system in right there. And then we will cover it back up with this substrate. And hopefully it will take root just like that. There we go, I think that's, that's pretty good. So now we are going to finish decorating with a couple little accent pieces that we have picked out. So first of all, we have this little, pretty little bell seed pod. And we are going to put it in the back right here, kind of poking out like a, like a tree dropped it. Because these actually grow on trees, I think. Either that or on like tall grasses. Could Damien hide in it as well? Damien could hide in it, and it could also collect water to actually keep the um, the ambient humidity up, which is really beneficial for the species. Um, actually, a lot more. So with tarantulas, you want to have a lot of ventilation and not as much humidity. However, for uh, whip scorpions, ventilation is not as necessary. It still is necessary. However, it's much more necessary that they have a lot of humidity. And another little accent piece, or accent pieces, I should say, are these little jawbones. I'm pretty sure they're a possum, but I could be wrong. And so we are just going to kind of bury them into the substrate, just like that, maybe. Mm, I think the back one should be up so you can see the teeth. The back one should be up like that? Yeah. Kind of put the front part behind that one. Maybe like that? Yeah, there we go. Mm, I don't know. I, I kind of like them going the other way. Like this, and I could like bury it half, and then have it like that. There you go. Yeah, looks good. Maybe like that. There we go. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. Have it like like that. Just make it look natural, you know. Not like someone put it there. But yeah, that looks pretty good. That is a nice ambulopigid enclosure. I'm gonna do a little 360 real quick. Yeah. And that is where she's going to spend most of her time in the back or in between these two right away here. from the light which is going to have this is going to have a mid-spectrum grow light on this enclosure to help the plant grow amblypidgeons aren't much of a fan of light so giving her some areas to hide and get away from the light will be very beneficial for her so we got this right here this will yep. be just over top the enclosure so let's put it back let's put damien in and then let's turn on the light all right, so now we have basically finished the enclosure other than for one thing, and that would be putting Damien inside of it. So here we go. Hopefully she's not going to bolt. Oh, no, she's easily coming out. And this enclosure is not designed for me to get her out very much because, to be honest, I don't get her out very much. So we are going to put her just directly into the enclosure. You can see her using her uh, whip-like antennae form legs to feel and taste around the enclosure. Oh, I think she likes it. There she goes. There, do you see her sensing her surroundings? Feeling, it's like a blind man's cane. Oh, I think she's gonna go straight in between the two pieces of cork bark. 
So yeah, there she goes, there she just where we predicted. She is going to love it in here. So there we go, and there's only one thing left to do, and that is to put the light on the enclosure. I don't necessarily know how to put the light on the enclosure. That works. That works. There, there we, go. we go. That is a well done you enclosure. You can really see it now. You can really see everything. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, don't be afraid to leave a like and subscribe if you're not already to the channel and hit the bell notification while you're down there so you get notified every time I upload a video just like this one. And tune in if you wanna see more bioactive builds, animal care guides, and herping videos, and just everything in between, and everything exotic. So, without further ado, Colesaurus Dick and Sonai, signing out. Yay! <laughs> So now we're going to be putting the plant in Troy! <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just like a... So now we're going to... So we're... <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing, we can't even film.